All right, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Good. A lot of you were on early and we weren't even serving cocktails, so that's fantastic. Thanks for being on time. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2020 USMMA Alumni Association and Foundation Homecoming Awards Dinner. My name is Jim Tobin, class of 1977, and I'm the president of the Alumni Association and Foundation. I will be your master of ceremonies for this evening's festivities. As you know, due to the COVID-19, this year's homecoming events were canceled. However, the AAF felt it needed to honor our alumni award winners. And although a video conference is not the same as an in-person ceremony, right now it's our next best thing. Hopefully we can pull this off without too many issues, fingers crossed. Let's hope we don't have an academy power outage in the middle of this. Don't know what we would do at that point. Here's how this is going to work. When I read your name and finish with your bio, I'm going to welcome and congratulate you. At that point, you know to say, I am here, thank you. Say it loud so you pop up on the screen. Hold up your award. We'll clap, we go on to the next person. The only person who will be giving a speech tonight besides our in introducers is our, our uh, King's Pointer of the Year. So don't try and sneak in any speeches. We'll mute you immediately. Uh, so hopefully you all understand how this will work. Complete bios of our, all of our award winners are in the program. I urge all of you to read them as they truly are remarkable. I will not be reading full bios. I will be reading shortened versions for time purposes. Some of you may not be happy that I'm not reading that part of your bio that you would have wanted to have highlighted. Please accept my apologies now. It would not be the first time some of you are not happy with me and perhaps maybe not the last, but we'll, we'll do our best onward and upward. Normally, I would only read the bios of those physically present at the award ceremony. Tonight, I will read all bios or acknowledge the award winners as we are not breaking for dinner. So sit back and enjoy. Congratulations on your well-deserved award. All of us are very proud of you. We will begin with the USMMA Fanfare Trumpets and USMMA Color Guard as we present the colors and the playing of our national anthem. Orange, up, present, colors. Okay, the invocation tonight will be given by the Command Chaplain, Coast Guard Sector, New York, 
Lieutenant Commander John B. Sears. Okay. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, bless this gathering tonight. Though we are far away physically, gather our hearts close in spirit. Remind us of the days of our youth that galvanize not only the strong values we hold, but the strong friendships we retain. Bless the Academy and all that it seeks to teach, mold, mentor, and develop in the cadets of today, and help us to continue to work diligently for the cadets of tomorrow. Finally, O oh Lord, bless all the honorees tonight. They have taken the time, talents, and opportunities with which you have blessed them to bless others and make our nation and our world richer in both experience and spirit. Allow them to set aside humility for a moment and take pride in what has been accomplished. May they remember this night always when we pause to recognize what they did to make life better for merchant mariners and for us all. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Appreciate you coming in on sh such short notice. We really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce to you the chairman of the board of directors of the USMMA Alumni Association and Foundation, Jim Hamilton, class of 1977. Thank you, Jim, and uh, good evening, everybody. Um, on behalf of the uh, of the AAF board of directors, I want to welcome everybody to uh, tonight's first and hopefully. Hopefully, last actual ceremony. It's been a very tough year. You know, hats off to Jack Bono and the staff at the academy who have um, who have steered the, the school through some very, very challenging times. And uh, we have worked hard to to be as supportive as we can uh, to to uh, help the morale of the school and to help Jack and the team um, you know, provide a, a first-class experience in a very challenging time. Um, first, I want to I want to thank the awards committee for all their hard work. Uh, they work tirelessly through the year to get these awards right every year, and they do a great job. And a, a special shout-out to Gordon Inouye, who's been chairman of the awards committee, who's stepping off as chairman. Um, has done an outstanding job, uh, you know, leading the awards committee for so many, so many years. So uh, thank you, Gordon. Um, and then for at last, I want to congratulate uh, all of the award recipients tonight. Uh, thank you for um, all of the effort that you have uh, and involvement with the AAF over the years. And also a, a uh, congratulations to all the personal successful achievements each one of you have, have earned. Um, a special uh, congratulations to Bob Lavinia uh, on Kings Pointer of the Year, um, who was a great board member um, uh, several years ago and has been uh, uh, a, a great help to the AAF over the years. And it's also great to see Paul Krinsky, Superintendent Krinsky, uh, back uh, for a well-deserved award. So thank you all to everybody. And uh, let's have a great night. And, and uh, thanks for everybody's help and assistance for all. And thanks for everything you do. Jim. Thank you, Jim. Really appreciate that. It is now my honor to introduce the 13th superintendent of the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, our very own Rear Admiral Jack Bono, class of 1978. Jim, can you hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> Thank you, Jim Hamilton, Captain Jim Tobin. It's a real pleasure for me to be with you tonight with you and all of these award recipients. You know, going through the program, uh, my math may not be that great, but there are thousands of years of leadership represented and gonna be recognized tonight. The mission of the United States Merchant Marine Academy is to graduate leaders of exemplary character 
who are committed to serve our economic and national security. And tonight we have the opportunity to, to recognize individuals that have stepped up for a lifetime of exemplary leadership. I couldn't be more proud to be associated with all of you. Yes, it is disappointing that this event is virtual tonight, but not so much in the way that you might imagine. Last year when we did this, I had the pleasure of watching our midshipmen who were present at this event, listen to the bios, listen to the accomplishments and leadership that individuals like yourselves tonight have been able to provide our nation, our industry, and our academy. To see on their faces that disbelief that they could possibly someday achieve what all of you have done in your lifetime is a very exciting component that will be missed tonight. But hopefully we'll have another opportunity to, to introduce each of you to our midshipmen. That is a very part, important part of their growth and development. But tonight, I'd like to thank you for having me. I need you to hear me say, acta non verba, that's what each and every one of you have done. Bob Lavinia, King's Pointer of the Year, well deserved. Thank you for all you have done over your career. Admiral Krinsky, it's amazing when I think back when I was here as a midshipman, you were my dean at the time. And it's an honor to have been through that journey partially with you too, as well. We heard about Gordon and all the efforts that he'd done. Patrick, Pat McAllister, I've worked with you. as a chapter president on the West Coast. I see Congressman Peter King, an honorary alum. And I'm not sure if he's participating tonight, but he has certainly done an amazing amount of good for our academy. And I could go on and on and talk about each and every one of the re recipients. For now, I'm gonna turn it back over to Jim. But please hear, please hear a huge thank you. Congratulations, yes, for your accomplishments, but a big thank you for doing what you have done to make our alumni association the best alumni association in the world, having a dramatic impact on our midshipmen today, helping to achieve the mission, and for all you've done in service to our nation, our industry, and our academy. Acting on Burma. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate that you could join us tonight. We know how busy you are with all that's going on. So let's start the program. Our first award this evening is the King's Pointer of the Year Award. The King's Pointer of the Year is the highest award which may be bestowed by the USMMA Alumni Association and Foundation upon any alumnus of the United States Merchant Marine Academy. By its very nature, it is an extraordinary honor and it is reserved only for individuals who have succeeded over a sustained period in attaining such stature as to warrant this paramount recognition. Our 2020 King's Pointer of the Year is from the class of 1970, Robert J. Lavinia. He was class of 70, come loudy, joined Gulf Oil Tankers upon graduation. He joined Philbro Energy in 1980 rose to become president and CEO of Philbro's refining company, Hill Petroleum Company. He joined Tosco Corporation in 1992, became senior vice president of the corporation and president of Tosco's marketing company. He formed Lavinia Enterprises in 2001. He, a director, he is a director of Transcore South SA from 2002 to 2006. He's chairman of the board of Pasadena Refining Company from 05 to 06. He was the CEO of PetroPlus Holdings AG in 08. He received the Meritorious Alumni Service Award in 1990. He led leadership role in revitalization of the Blue and Gray Club. He's the winner of the Acta Non Verba Award in 1994. He was inducted into the USMMA Athletic Hall of Fame in 1994. He received an Outstanding Professional Achievement Award in 1995. He's a former director of the USMMA Alumni Association and Foundation. He has been a Lanier Lecture speaker, speaker. He is on the Flying Bridge Honor Roll and he's on the Giles C. Stedman Society. 
one of our highest giving societies. Please welcome and congratulate the 2020 King's Pointer of the Year from the class of 1970, Robert J. Lavinia. Am I unmuted now? Good, I can't hear you. Uh, Jimmy, thank you very much. Um, strange times indeed, doing it this way, but uh, it's what we do. Um, thank you. I'm honored and humbled to receive this most prestigious award. And let me add my congratulations to all of those others that are receiving their awards. And certainly some of my classmates, Dave Lindemann, Little Paul, Little Leif Erickson, uh, Joe Martucci, Leo Dominic, Sarjola, uh, Paulo Varaki, uh, I think Murph is on there, Bruno Rabalico, Coco. Um, and what's really even more sort of thrilling for me, I'm looking at Paul Krinsky. And it's been, I don't know, 50 years. Um, you don't age. I don't know what, you know, you obviously have Merle Norman products. Um, you look great. I hope all is well. Also, I think Charlie Hill is on this. It was great working with you. Um, it was some special times. Um, my comments will be brief. As some of you may know, I first started college at George Washington University on a football, Division I football scholarship. It took me only a few months there at GW to realize that football was gonna be my focus in that particular environment. And academics was, resultingly, going to be marginalized. It was an awakening for me that to play at that level and getting a meaningful and significant education was incongruous and improbable. Leaving GW and going to another Division I school obviously made no sense to me. The, you know, sort of the definition of stupidity. You do the same thing and expect a different outcome. Luckily, in my senior year of high school, I was also recruited by Annapolis, West Point, and Kings Point. Uh, as I contemplated my move from GW, only King's Point seemed to make any sense, and for more reasons than time will allow me to discuss. Short summary, one of the best decisions of my life, actually one of my first business-oriented decisions. The King's Point experience, while certainly no fun, uh, conditioned me well for my business life ahead. My ability to break down complex issues into solvable solutions and deal with stress served me well. And I was blessed to work for some great companies and some truly great and amazing people. But none of this would have happened without an amazing wife and friend who was also my girlfriend all through those years at King's Point. She kept me focused on doing the very best I could while I was at the academy. I lost Ruth last year to a nine and a half year battle with ovarian cancer. She's gone, never forgotten, always my love. And none of it would have happened without her. So for those cadets, cadets who might be listening, stay focused and do the very best you can. Your King's Point experience in education will serve you very, very well, that I promise. Jim, thank you. And to the nomination committee, I thank you. It's an honor, a privilege, and my congratulations to all. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Let's hear it for Bob. Our next award category is the Distinguished Service Award. It shall be utilized to appropriately recognize any individual who has made a major contribution to the Academy, the USMM Alumni Association and Foundation, or the maritime industry. This award for alumni ranks just below King's Pointer of the Year. Our first award winner is Admiral Paul L. Krinsky, Class of 50. Rear Admiral Paul L. Krinsky has a lifetime of distinguished service to USMMA. He sailed as a deck officer for United States lines aboard the SS America and SS United States. He served in numerous positions of distinction at the Academy, including instructor, director of admissions, academic dean, deputy superintendent, and finally, in 1987, appointed superintendent of the United States Merchant Marine Academy, only the second grad to hold that position. He has been actively involved in the integration of women at the academy, 
Kings Point was the first service academy to admit women in 1974, two years prior to any other service academy. Rear Admiral Krinsky's longtime investment in strategic planning was paramount in future successes of the academy. Please welcome and congratulate our Distinguished Service Award winner from the class of 1950, Admiral Paul L. Krinsky. Admiral, you there? I'm here. There you go, let's congratulate. Thank you very much, much appreciated, it's an honor. Our next award winner from the class of 1965 is Gordon E. Inouye. Graduating in 1965, he sailed for APL, earning his chief engineer's license at age 25. He is a founding member and president of the Islands of Hawaii chapter of the AAF. He has been chairman of the AAF Awards Committee since 2011. He actively supports the Kings Point soccer team. He organizes class of 65 mini reunions. As chapter president, along with the Honolulu chapter, his chapter co-sponsors and raises funds for the senior luau. He generally, generously donates to the AAF is a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. He regularly participates and actively sends messages to his class, encouraging everyone's participation in fundraising efforts. Gordon is a previous recipient of an OPA in 2010 and a Meritorious Alumni Service Award in 2015. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1965, Gordon E. Inouye. Aloha from Hawaii, and I'd like to thank everyone for participating today, and uh, I'm very humbled by this award. Thank Mahalo, you. and God bless. Mahalo. Our next award winner from the class of 1965, Patrick J. McAllister. Pat sailed for American Export Exp Branson Lines, raising his license to Chief Engineer in five years. Pat served as president and CEO of San Roque Power Corporation in Manila, constructing the largest hydroelectric project in the Philippines. Pat is best known to his fellow Kings Pointers for his leadership as the Columbia River chapter president and as a field representative for the academy. He has also served as an officer in the Puget Sound chapter and was a member of the Manila chapter. Pat has led the Columbia River chapter to three gold pennant awards for support of alumni, community engagement, and work with the Washington chapter of the National Parents Association. He lends his support with the Southwest Washington Congressman's nominating panel and also his Oregon Senator's nominating panel. Pat works with fellow alumni in the maritime industry in pursuit of internships for third classmen with local shipyards. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1965, Patrick J. McAllister. I am here. Thank you. Appreciate the award. Congrats, Pat. Our next award winner is Congressman Peter T. King, a Republican who's serving his 14th term in the U.S. House of Representatives being elected, re-elected in November 2018. He is retiring from Congress this year. He has been a leader in homeland security and is a strong supporter of the war against international terrorism, both at home and abroad. Even Newsday has admitted that Congressman King is a stand-up guy who isn't shy about tangling with the powerful, even those in his own party. King has become a national figure who delivers for the region and his district. He was there for us during our darkest times. He always supported the Academy and the Alumni Association Foundation. He gave us a voice when no one else would. He will be missed and he will always be a member of our Kings Point family. Let's congratulate Congressman Peter T. King. Our next award category is the Peter J. Rackett 61 Lifetime Achievement Award. 
This award is presented in honor of Peter J. Rackett, class of 61, the former vice president of alumni affairs for the Alumni Association Foundation, who dedicated himself to the alumni, Kings Point, its midshipmen, and its athletic programs for over 30 years. This award is established to recognize those graduates who have dedicated themselves to the academy, the midshipmen, and the alumni over their lifetime. The Peter J. Rackett 61 Lifetime Achievement Award winner is from the class of 1965, Charles J. Hill. He has provided very generous financial support and is a member of the Giles Stedman Giving Society. He's a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. He showed outstanding leadership in recovering substantial funds for the Alumni Association. He has steady and unyielding leadership during trying times for Kings Point. He has an unbendable moral compass and courage has made him persevere. Involved for decades with the USMMA wrestling program, both as a recruiter and a mentor. He epitomizes the qualities of the Peter J. Rackett Lifetime Achievement Award. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 65, Charles J. Hill. Charlie, give a wave. I don't know if you can even see me because my video went out. But we can see you and hear you. Oh, good. I just can't see anybody else. But uh, I'm very honored by this. Uh, Pete was always a role model for me, and I hope a role model for, for every other graduate. Thank you. Congratulations, Charlie. Well deserved. Our next award category is the Kenneth A. DeGhetto 43 Award. This award is presented to a graduate or non-graduate whose persistent personal efforts over a period of years had developed a base of donors for the USMMA Alumni Association and Foundation. This year's award winner from the class of 1965 is Richard Mo S. Dimachowski. Mo is the class of 65 class of chairman. Mo exhibits the generous spirit of Ken DeGhetto in his fundraising leadership. He is committed to Kings Point's success in the All Academy Challenge and proud of his class's performance in the recent USMMA Challenge. He is a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. He is recognized by his classmates for his support of the KP class of 65 and the Academy. Please welcome and congratulate Richard Mo S. Dimachowski, class of 1965. Congrats, Mo. Our next award category is the Daniel E. Meehan 51 Humanitarian Award. It's established to recognize and honor an alum who has dedicated significant time and energy to charitable activities and organizations. This individual shall possess the traits of Daniel E. Meehan, 51, who has been honored many times for his dedicated generosity to those most in need and often neglected and forgotten. This year's Daniel Meehan, 51 Humanitarian Award winner from the class of 1969 is John A. C. Cartner. He's a master mariner, maritime lawyer, author, and advocate for seafarers' welfare. He received recognition by the AF in 1984 for outstanding professional achievement. He is being recognized today for his maritime humanitarian work. John was awarded the Council of American Master Mariners Lalonde Spirit of the Seas Award for Humanitarian Service in 2014. He performed significant pro bono work for real maritime humanitarian problems, focusing on the so-called criminalization of shipmasters. Using his legal capabilities, he has worked in support of individuals and the various international seafarers' welfare institutes to aid shipmasters in need worldwide. He is a frequent contributor commentator on maritime TV and elsewhere as an advocate for seafarer rights. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1969, John A.C. Cartner. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Chairman and I thank the committee. I am grateful 
I am humbled, and I thank you. Congratulations, John. Our next award category is the Joseph M. Baker 47 Award. This award is established to recognize and honor a member of the 50th anniversary homecoming reunion class who has provided lifelong leadership, service, and dedication to his or her classmates. This individual shall possess the traits of Joseph M. Baker Jr., who is the class of 1947's class agent for 50 years. He provided the principal leadership for the class after graduation and was the glue that held the class together. This year's Joseph M. Baker Jr. 47 Award from the class of 1970 is David E. Lindman. He was the class of 70's 45th reunion chair. He is the class of 70 50th reunion chair. He is the point of contact for Memorial Arbors for the class of 1970. He established the class of 1970 contact database. He's the go-to for locating classmates and bringing the class together. He is a member of the Flying Bridge and he's a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1970, David E. Lindman. Where are you, David? He's not here. Okay. Congratulations, David. Our next award category is the Captain Michael Walker 69 Memorial Award. This award shall be awarded to a graduate of the United States Merchant Marine Academy who performs an act of heroism at sea while discharging the duties of a merchant marine officer. The heroic act shall be performed in the highest traditions of the United States Merchant Marine while displaying outstanding dedication, courage, and disregard for personal safety. I will read the full descriptions of their actions because they do uphold the highest traditions of the U.S. Merchant Marine. Our first award winner is Captain T. Charles T. Wilson, class of 54, who is master of the SS Badger State, which departed Bangor, Washington on December 14, 1969, with a cargo of bombs for Vietnam. 34-year-old Captain Wilson was responsible for a ship, its cargo and crew of 38 shipmates as they encountered rough weather from the start. No sooner had they got underway, a shaft alley seal leak caused them to reduce speed. Increasing bad weather resulted in severe rolling, which led to the dangerous cargo to shift in each hole with bombs springing loose. All hands were called out to secure the bombs working around the clock. Captain Wilson confronted this series of catastrophic events with professional leadership and determination to save his ship and crew members. Following an explosion, he issued an SOS on December 26th and saw 35 crew members into a lifeboat while he and three others remained on board. As the lifeboat, tethered by its painter, trailed along the hull under the gaping hole opened by the bomb blast, Another bomb tumbled out and capsized the fully loaded lifeboat. Following a search for anyone left behind, he and others abandoned the Badger State and jumped into the sea. Captain Wilson and 13 crew members were picked up by another ship responding to his SOS. To quote the US Coast Guard, throughout this ordeal, the actions of the master and crew members of the Badger State were in the best traditions of the sea. Captain Wilson's week-long heroic efforts with no sleep are recorded in William Benedento's book, Sailing into the Abyss. Please congratulate Charles T. Wilson, class of 1954. Our next award winner is Paul C. Leif Erickson, class of 1970. While serving aboard the Damon B. Bankston, a large offshore supply vessel, he was a central figure in the rescue of 115 survivors arising from the loss of the Deepwater Horizon during the night of April 20th, 2010. The Bankston was on location at Mississippi Canyon in the Gulf of Mexico alongside the horizon, awaiting a liquid drilling mud transfer. At 2153 hours, a loud pressure release from the horizon was noted. 
Captain Landry and mate Erickson were on watch in the Bankston's wheelhouse. The horizon was contacted and confirmed trouble with the well. Moments later, explosion and fire erupted near the horizon's derrick. Mate Erickson sounded the Bankston's general alarm at the same time Captain Landry was receiving mayday calls from the horizon as the crew prepared to abandon the rig. After the first crew members jumped into the gulf, the horizon requested the Bankston to launch its fast rescue craft, which then rescued the personnel in the water and towed the horizon life raft to safety. After the two horizon lifeboats reached the Bankston safely, a head count was taken, revealing the rescue of 115 of the horizon's personnel, but sadly having to report that 11 were missing. The heroic actions of the Bankston and her entire crew have been recognized by the US Coast Guard and the Department of the Interior, where it was confirmed that had it not been for the brave and selfless actions of the crew of the Bankston, the loss of life would have been significantly higher. Let's all congratulate Paul C. Leaf Erickson, class of 70. Our next award winner is William H. Boyce, class of 78. He was in command at the car carrier MV Green Lake on December 31st, 2018, and was first to respond to a distress call from the car carrier Sincerity Ace in the mid-North Pacific, 800 miles west of Midway. Sincerity Ace crew were trapped on the bridge, barely able to breathe with three car decks of new cars ablaze. Abandoning ship from lifeboats life rafts was not possible due to intense heat, smoke, and explosions. At sunrise, the crew abandoned ship, climbing one by one with just their life jackets on, down a 120 foot into a very rough seas, which was 25 to 35 knots and 20 to 25 foot heavy swell with a man rope that they had somehow found. Captain Boyce's leadership and seamanship skills enabled the crew of the Green Lake to successfully rescue seven survivors by maneuvering the vessel right alongside each survivor, one by one, in terrible sea conditions. Green Lake became the on-scene commander for the U.S. Coast Guard response effort and four other Good Samaritan vessels who aided in the rescue. All total, 16 Sincerity Ace crew members were rescued. Captain Boyce and his crew of the MV Green Lake were awarded the Gallant Ship Award from Marad. It was the first ship in 25 years and the 42nd overall to receive this award. It also received the AOTIS Life Saving Award, the IMO Life Saving Award, the AMVER Life Saving Award, and the Marine Society of the City of New York Life Saving Award. I don't believe. Uh, Bill is with us, but let's all congratulate William H. Boyce, class of 1978. Our next award winner, Julianne G. Algren Parrott, class of 1980, is being honored for an act of heroism in line with the highest tradition of the United States Merchant Marine while displaying outstanding dedication and courage and disregard for her own personal safety. She suffered severe burns on April 3rd, 1981, after an explosion and fire in the engine room aboard the USNS Toluga. Ms. Parrott, along with the fireman watchstander, were in the process of changing boiler burners in preparation for speed alterations ordered from the bridge. Ms. Parrott was monitoring the automatic combustion control board when she heard a noise and immediately observed fuel oil spraying from a disengaged burner oil feed line. Good. Good to the Both she and the, the fireman, fireman watchstander were covered in fuel oil. She jumped to action to the firing platform and began shutting off the fuel oil root valve to the burner. It sounds like they started this At early. this time, an explosion occurred and both individuals were engulfed in flames. That's Jim. She ordered the firemen to safety, and despite being on fire with pain, she departed the dark, smoke-filled fire room 
and proceeded to the chief engineer's quarters to report the emergency while notifying shipmates of the fire along the way. She was airlifted to UC San Diego Medical Center by helicopter. 83% of her body was covered in burns and she was not expected to survive the disastrous accident. She spent money, many months in the hospital followed by years of recovery. Her bravery and personal courage have served as inspiration to all of us and are in line with the finest traditions of the Merchant Marine. Let's congratulate Julianne G. Parrott, class of 1980. Our next award winner from the class of 97 is Jonathan K. J.T. Tennant. He undocked the 20,000 ton, 650 foot automobile carrier Golden Ray on September 8, 2019 with 4,000 automobiles on board from her birth in Brunswick, Georgia and conned her into the ship channel heading for sea. As the ship entered the channel, she took a sudden, unexpected, and rapidly increasing heel to port. Although concerned the vessel was about to capsize, Captain Tennant put the rudder hard to port, swinging the ship away from the center of the channel and onto a sandbar to the north, where she continued increasing her list, but it left sufficient channel clearance for oncoming vessel traffic. With the vessel nearly on her side, experiencing a 72 degree list, Captain Tennant had his life vest and VH radio. He had braced himself between the compass binnacle and the wheelhouse windows sufficiently to get a mayday call out, seeking rescue of the 23 other persons on board and himself. He coordinated the dispatch of a tug to keep the ship out of the channel which she might otherwise have flooded before the crew could be rescued. Propulsion, power, and steering were lost. Alarms were sounding. The ship was in darkness and a fire broke out with smoke coming from the cargo holds. From his precarious position in the wheelhouse, Captain Tennant managed to coordinate rescue of the crew onto Coast Guard rescue vessels. Finally, Captain Tennant effected his own rescue by sliding down a fire hose across the wheelhouse deck, through the wheelhouse door on the port side, and then jumping into a rescue boat. The competent professionalism of Captain Tennant ensured that this terrible tragedy resulted in no loss of life. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1997, Jonathan K. J. T. Tennant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, John. Our next award category is the Meritorious Alumni Service Award. This is presented to an anniversary year graduate who renders commendable service to the purposes and traditions of the Academy or the USMMA Alumni Association and Foundation. Our first award will be presented posthumously to Robert D. Janizov, class of 1955. He served in the U.S. Navy for three years. He worked as a chief engineer and division manager at Caterpillar for 39 years. He is a member of the Travelers Protective Association and the German American Club. He is an outstanding supporter of the Alumni Association and Foundation, and is a member of the Giles Stedman Giving Society. Accepting the award on his behalf is his daughter, Leanne Janisoff. Let's please welcome and congratulate Leanne Janisoff. Actually, I'm, a, I'm the daughter-in-law. This is Bob's son, Eric. I'm the daughter-in-law. Okay, Leanne, daughter-in-law, and, and Robert Janisoff, Bob Janisoff's son. Welcome to both of you. And again, we uh, our condolences to you and your family on a loss of a great man, your father and father-in-law, Robert D. Janisoff. Congratulations. Thank you. Our next award winner from the class of 1960 is George G. Leffler. He has been the co-correspondent for the Class of 1960 news column in the Quarterly King's Pointer. He's a member of the 1960 Reunion Committee. He's a steward for the 1960 Memorial Plaques. He manages the class contact list. 
and he's a member of the Mid-Hudson Alumni Chapter. Let's congratulate, from the class of 1960, George G. Leffler. Our next award winner from the class of 1964, Richard Moe S. D. Machowski. He serves on his Congressman's Academy Selection Panel. He led the establishment of his class's fully subscribed plaque fund. He participates on all class reunion committees. He is an active member of the Southwest Connecticut Alumni Chapter. He's a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll, and he strongly supports the All Academy Challenges. Please welcome and congratulate once again from the class of 1965, Richard Moe S. Dimachowski. Thank you very much. Congrats, Mo. Our next award winner from the class of 1965 is David Osborne. While pursuing his career after graduation, he never forgot his roots. He has been a most generous donor to the AAF as part of the Giles Stedman Society, one of our highest society, giving societies. His contribution in this year's USMMA challenge was the largest by any donor in his class propelling the class of 1965 to a total of over $67,000, a record for all classes. His generous character is also exemplified by his participation in many regional service and charitable organizations, such as the Council on Occupational Education, the Kentucky State Board for Adult and Technical Education, and the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, and the Foundation for the Tri-State Communities. Let's all congratulate David Osborne, class of 1965. Our next award winner from the class of 1970, David E. Lindman. David is, is the vice president of the San Francisco Bay Alumni Chapter. He's the former president of the Seattle Chapter. He's an Academy Information Representative and Academy Congressional Representative. He's attained chief engineer status. He's an attorney and Lieutenant USNR retired. He's the class of 1970's 50th reunion co-chair. He's a member of the Edwin J. O'Hara Giving Society. He's a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. Let's please welcome and congratulate, he's now here from the class of 1970, David E. Lindman. David. David, say hey, thank you. Getting your hands in it. There he is, David. <laughs> say hello. Another David, but thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, David. Our next award winner from the class of 1970, Joseph A. Martucci Jr. <laughs> is a chief engineer on limited horsepower license. Every time he changed. Captain USNR retired. He's held five commands. He was on the MEBA board of directors pension training and medical trusts. He was GMAT's interim director and department head of training and administration in nautical science, military programs, and the engineering division. He's currently a director on the Alumni Association's board of directors. He's a member of the Edwin J. O'Hara Society. He's also a member of the Flying Bridge. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1970, Joseph A. Martucci, Jr. Joe? I'm here somewhere. There you go. Hold up your award, Joe. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm honored, humbled. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next award winner from the class of 1985, Glenda S. O'Connor. She's the matriarch of a truly Kings Point family. Her husband is the class of 82. Her son is the class of 10. Her daughter is the class of 12. And we are awaiting her granddaughter who will be in the class of 2043. She's a 10 year member of the AEF Awards Committee with four years serving as vice chair. She has served on two Congressional Service Academy selection boards. She's a charter member of two alumni chapters. She volunteers her counseling services to any midshipman in need, 
and she's a member of the Edwin J. O'Hara Giving Society. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1985, Glenda S. O'Connor. I'm honored for the recognition, thank you. Congratulations, Glenda. Our next award winner from the class of 1995, Brian J. Dudley. <laughs> He's had a 25-year career in the U.S. Coast Guard, attaining rank of captain. His reserve career included re being responsible for port security for U.S. bases in the Middle East and in the United States. He reestablished the Northern California Alumni Chapter. He's active in AAF political outreaches and distribution of the King's Pointer to congressmen and others on the Hill. He serves as a liaison and mentor to appointees in preparation for their reporting to the academy. For 25 years, he has been the face and voice of the class of 1995. Let's congratulate from the class of 1995, Brian J. Dudley. I remind you to please mute yourself if you're not being recognized. Our next award winner from the class of 1995, Sean F. Kucharski, is a commander, U.S. Navy Reserve, deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. He worked for MSC Sealab Command Atlantic in Norfolk, Virginia. He founded his own maritime risk management and insurance company. He's currently the president of Flagship Marine Underwriters, LLC. He serves as the class of 1995 reunion committee. And he's a regular correspondent and contributor for the King's Pointer Magazine. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1995, Sean F. Kucharski. He's not here, but we congratulate Sean. The next category, award category, Outstanding Professional Achievement. It's presented to an anniversary year graduate who best exemplifies the finest tradition of the academy by attaining personal achievement in his chosen field, thus lending honor and prestige to the United States Merchant Marine Academy. Our first award winner is from the class of 1965, Phil A. Fetcher. He was a senior vice president, Stolt Tankers and Terminals. He was director of chartering for Stolt Tankers and Terminals. He held an unlimited master's license and he retired as a Lieutenant Commander USNR. Let's congratulate from the class of 1965, Phil A. Fetcher. Our next award winner from the class of 1965 is Ronald A. Forsberg. Ron sailed four years on his license with U.S. shipping companies before coming ashore. He played a significant role in the development of the vertical integrated pump, the VIP. Ron invented and patented instrumentation to protect VIP pumps from cavitation. He retired from Sundyne in 2004 after 30 years to start Forsberg Consulting. He has been successful in providing design and specification reviews for VIP pumps. He has received Phillips Petroleum's Award for Excellence for his design reviews. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1965, Ronald A. Forsberg. Thank you, I'm very honored to receive this award. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Ron. Our next award winner from the class of 1965 is Peter Haynes. He worked with Texaco Marine Department for 30 years and sailed for three years on Texaco tankers. He worked for 27 years ashore, including various upper management positions. He founded Maritime Quality Consultants, Inc. in 1995 as president and principal consultant. He's a member of the Concordia University Texas Board of Regents, honored, along with his wife, for 20 years of support of their Christian education and nursing programs. He's currently the treasurer of Living Savior Lutheran Church in Montgomery, Texas. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1965, Peter Hames. Thank you very much. I'm honored. Hello. We Thank see you, you very Peter. much. 
Thank you very much. I'm honored and, and humbled to receive this award. Congratulations, Peter. Our next award winner from the class of 1965, Robert N. Croman. He pioneered ocean cargo barge service on the lower Yukon River. He has an unlimited master's license with an unrestricted towing endorsement. He has US Coast Guard first class unlimited tonnage pilot, pilot license for Puget Sound and adjacent waters. He has a Washington State pilot license for unlimited tonnage issued by the Washington State Board of Pilotage. He served three terms vice president of the Puget Sound Pilots, served two terms president of the Puget Sound Pilots, and nine and a half years as commissioner on the Washington State Board of Pilotage. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1965, Robert N. Croman. Yeah, hello. It's a it's a great honor. I appreciate it very much. Thanks to the alumni and the academy. Congratulations, Robert. Next award winner from the class of 1965, David Osborne. Following graduation, he sailed on T2 tankers for Tidewater Oil. He obtained a professional engineer's license in multiple states. He is founder, co-owner, and owner and president of Devcon Inc., a construction firm and Kenko Associates, Inc., an engineering services company. Dave served as the president of the Kentucky Society of Professional Engineers and director of the National Society of Professional Engineers. He was recognized in Kentucky as a Small Business Person of the Year and chairman of the Kentucky Plumbing Committee. He has been a most generous donor to the AEF, is a Giles Stedman Society donor, and he was a significant donor in this year's US MMA Challenge. Please, let's all congratulate from the class of 1965, David Osborne. Our next award winner from the class of 1965, Monty F. Reich. He served in the defense of two countries, the United States and Israel. He's a Lieutenant Commander, U.S. Coast Guard Reserves, retired. He's a lieutenant, he was a Lieutenant Colonel in the Israeli Air Force. And he was the Chief Superintendent in the Israel National Police and since retired. Let's congratulate from the class of 1965, Monty F. Reich. Our next award winner from the class of 1965, William W. Tracy, holds a chief engineer of steam, motor, and gas turbine vessels of any horsepower. And it's his 14th seconds. licensed issue. Not even. He is a Golden Mariner Award recipient. He is a Juris Doctor and a Bar Member of the United States Supreme Court. He is a 20-year member of the board operating the Mariner's House of Boston. He's a talented guitar, mandolin, bass, and fiddle musician, and I have personally been serenaded by him. Let's congratulate, from the class of 1965, William W. Tracy. Our next award winner from the class of 1965, John G. Winterton. He's a global director of machinery diagnostic services of the General Electric Corporation. He is a subject matter expert in the gear industry. He is an author and a distinguished speaker on gear design and machinery vibration acoustics. He is a registered professional engineer in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1965, John G. Winterton. I'm honored, thank you very much. Congratulations, John. Our next award winner from the class of 1970, Leo G. Dominique. He is a 30 year naval career retiring as captain US Navy. He commanded the USS Will Rogers and the USS Fulton. He was the commanding officer, submarine base, New London. He was assistant chief of naval research. 
He was a recipient three times of the Legion of Merit, four times for the Meritorious Service Medal, and twice for a Navy Commendation Medal among several additional recognitions, both military and civilian. He's a strong supporter of the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy and a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1970, Leo G. Dominique. I'm here. Thank you very much for this honor. Looking good, Leo. Congratulations. Our next award winner from the class of 1970, Michael Oler. He has 33 years of seagoing experience, 18 as a master. He's attained the rank of Captain USNR retired. He was a commander of the Arabian Gulf Naval Operations. He was a US Naval Academy instructor in navigation and seamanship. He's a recognized maritime professional author. He's a member of the McNulty Society and the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. Let's congratulate from the class of 1970, Michael Oler. Our next award winner from the class of 1970, Paul M. Varaki. This is his second OPA award, which he received in 1995. He's been the chairman of the board at Oceans Healthcare a partner at General Catalyst Partners. He served as chairman at Clear Result Consulting. He has been a recipient of the National Entrepreneur of the Year Award from Inc. Magazine. He's a member of the Edwin J. O'Hara Society, and he is also a Silver Mariner. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1970, Paul M. Baraki. Paul. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations, Paul. Our next award winner from the class of 1975, Reginald E. McCamey. He holds a Juris Doctor, an MBA, and a CPA license. He's the founder and CEO of the Maritime Law Firm, the Law Office of Reginald E. McCamey Sr., PC. He held an unlimited master's license. He retired as a captain, USNR, and he's a pilot commissioner for Harris County, Texas. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1975, Reginald E. McCamey. <laughs> Reggie with us? Okay, he, uh, he, was, he was away, so, but our congratulations go out to Reggie. Our next award winner from the class of 1975, John V. Reshore. He was one of Mobile Oil's most successful marine lubricant sales representatives, a technical expert in marine lubricants, holds a chief engineer's license. He's also a licensed commercial pilot and a certified instrument flight instructor. And he was inducted into the USMMA Athletic Hall of Fame in 1995. Let's welcome and congratulate from the class of 1975, John V. Reshore. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. Congratulations, John. Our next award winner from the class of 1980, Paul J. Campa. He purchased his first investment property in 1983 in Manhattan, followed by additional properties in 1984 and 1986. Less than 10 years after graduating, Paul was managing over 100 apartments. He was captain on New York City's prison barge from 1992 to 1997. Today, Paul is the CEO of Rumline Realty Management Corp, FF FSS Leasing Corp, and Rincon Management Corporation, which owns and manages apartment properties in Manhattan and Long Island. He is a strong supporter of the AAF and is a previous member of the Flying Bridge. He is a member of the Edwin J. O'Hara Society. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1980, Paul J. Campa. Is Paul with us? Okay, we congratulate Paul. Our next award winner from the class of 1985, David J. Burge. 
He worked for Gibbs and Cox. He sailed on his license in 1986. He moved on to regional manager of Jet Blast. He has been assistant vice president for OSG Ship Management. He worked for DVB Bank as vice president, which is a specialist in international transportation finance. He joined Moody's Investor Services in 2002, and he is a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1985, David J. Burge. Thank you. Thank you. Looking good, David. Thank you. Congratulations. Our next award winner from the class of 1985, Barry W. Ingold. Barry served 13 years active duty Navy as a submariner. He then served 13 years reserve duty. He commanded five reserve units, was a dual major at KP and has achieved degrees in mechanical engineering and business administration upon graduation. He joined Tri-State Generation and Transmission Associates and is currently Senior Vice President of Generation at Tri-State. He is a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1985, Barry W. Ingold. Thank you, great to be here tonight. Congrats, Barry. Our next award is awarded posthumously to the 1995 Matthew J. Bowen. He was a rotary wing naval aviator. He flew the MH-60R helicopter, which is the most versatile helicopter in the US Navy inventory. He was commanding officer, helicopter training, squadron eight. He retired as a commander, US Navy. Let's congratulate from the class of 1995, Matthew J. Bowen. Our next award winner also posthumously from the class of 95, Ellis H. Moose. He had a 22 year career with the United States Coast Guard. He commanded all marine inspection activities in the Port of New York. In 2004, he was the recipient of the U.S. Coast Guard's Congressman James Center Award for Excellence in Marine Investigations. He retired as a commander at USCG. Accepting the award is his widow, Laura Moose. Please let's welcome and congratulate Laura Moose on behalf of Ellis H. Moose. Laura. Thank you everyone for remembering the amazing man that my husband was and the legacy that he has left. Um, he wouldn't have been the man he was without Kings Point. So thank you everyone, we appreciate it. Thank you, Laura, congratulations. Our next award winner from the class of 1995, David R. Whitcomb. He's a senior vice president of production services, Vigor Shipyards the largest ship repair and industrial fabrication company in the Pacific Northwest. He oversees production at six Vigor facilities and four remote sites, including Alaska. He oversees the Vigor inter internship program, which is a pathway for midshipmen to fulfill their internship requirement. He's a spokesman to Congress on behalf of the Shipbuilders Council of America. Please let's welcome and congratulate from the class of 1995, David R. Whitcomb. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate it very much. Congratulations, David. Our next award winner from the class of 2000, Brian C. Coyne. Brian worked for Sea River Maritime Exxon Mobil for five years following graduation. He sailed as a third officer on a variety of vessels. In 2005, he transitioned to KPI Ocean Connect, a leading global broker and trader of marine fuels, marine lubricants, and risk management. At KPI Ocean Connect, he is participating in the expansion and transition of the business from one office to a worldwide presence and 15 locations and revenues exceeding 2.2 billion. In 2015, he was promoted to managing director of KPI Ocean Connect. Americas. Through his leadership, KPI Ocean Connect is the national sponsor of the Blue and Gray Golf Outings for the past four years. 
He was the distinguished alumni speaker at graduation for the class of 2020. He is a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. Let's congratulate from the class of 2000, Brian C. Coyne. Our next award winner from the class of 2000, Joseph A. Martucci III. Following graduation in 2000, Joe worked on board the Empire State as an instructional watchstander and classroom instructor. Over the next six years, he served as an engineering officer aboard commercial vessels, eventually as a first assistant for Patriot Contact Services. He was an amoeba union representative in New York as a lead negotiator, organizer, and recruiter. In 2008, he began work as supervisory engineer at Acme Industrial Inc., where he supervised maritime power plant and refinery plant repair projects. He was promoted to president of Acme Industrial in 2010, where he's developed a strategic plan to advance the company's mission and objectives to promote revenue, profitability, and growth. He's a very generous supporter and a member of the Flying Bridge Honor Roll. Let's congratulate from the class of 2000, Joseph A. Martucci III. Our next award category is the Alumni Chapter President's Award. This award is presented to a graduate and is established to recognize alumni who have provided unparalleled support to their local alumni chapter over a prolonged period of time. Criteria to be considered include significant contributions and or long periods of personal service to a local alumni chapter in support of the Academy, the Regiment of Midshipmen, or the USMMA Alumni Association and Foundation. This year's Alumni Chapter Award, President's Award from the class of 1965 is Patrick J. McAllister. Pat has been the Columbia River Chapter President for the past four years and was active in the chapter for many years prior. Under his leadership, the chapter has received the coveted Gold Distinguished Chapter Award every year for the past four years. Pat has also developed a close working relationship with the Academy Admissions Department. His knowledge of the admissions process and relationships he has built within that office has been extremely helpful to potential candidates and his fellow chapter presidents. Pat has actively reached out and brought into the Kings Point family, the local area parents of USMMA midshipmen. In addition to his chapter duties, Patrick supports the academy in the field by serving on the nominating panels for Congressman Butler and Senator Merkel. Please welcome and congratulate from the class of 1965, Patrick J. McAllister. Thank you very much, Tim. Appreciate the award. Congrats, Pat. Our next award category, the Silver Mariner Award is presented to a graduate who is licensed and has sailed as a master, chief engineer, or first class pilot, or who has served active duty military for at least 25 consecutive years. There's no bios to be read here, but we're going to welcome and congratulate our winners. Our first award winner, from the class of 1960, posthumously, Willard W. Haldeman, Chief Engineer. Let's welcome and congratulate, I'm sorry, let's congratulate from the class of 60, <laughs> Willard W. Haldeman. Our next Silver Mariner Award winner from the class of 1960, posthumously, Frederick R. Larson, Captain, U.S. Navy. His award will be accepted by his daughter, Joanna Gibson. So let's welcome and congratulate the daughter of Frederick R. Larson, Joanna Gibson. Joanna? Our next award winner from the class of 1970, Donald P. Kokoza, Master. Let's congratulate from the class of 1970, Donald P. Kokoza. Our next Silver Mariner Award winner from the class of 1970, Leo G. Dominique, Captain, U.S. Navy. Let's welcome and congratulate 
from the class of 1970, Leo G. Dominique. Thank you very much. Look at that. Next award winner from class of 1970, Thomas E. Gibbons, Chief Engineer. Let's congratulate from the class of 1970, Thomas E. Gibbons. Our next Silver Mariner Award winner from the class of 1970, posthumously, to Patrick E. Hammond, Chief Engineer. Let's congratulate from the class of 1970, Patrick E. Hammond. Our next award winner from the class of 1970, Silver Mariner, Frederick J. Murphy, Master. Let's congratulate Frederick J. Murphy, class of 1970. Our next Silver Mariner Award from the class of 1970 is Bruno P. Revelico, Master. Let's congratulate from the class of 1970, Bruno P. Revelico. Our next Silver Mariner Award winner from the class of 1970 is Joseph J. Wildgen, Master. Let's welcome, I'm sorry, let's congratulate from the class of 1970, Joseph J. Wildgen. Our next Silver Mariner Award winner from the class of 1975, Daniel J. Doty, Pilot. Let's welcome and congratulate from the class of 1975, Daniel J. Doty. Congrats, Dan. Our next Silver Mariner from the class of 1975, Kent R. Flick, Master. Let's congratulate from the class of 1975, Kent R. Flick. Our next Silver Mariner from the class of 1975, Michael C. Spence, pilot. Let's congratulate from the class of 1975, Michael C. Spence. Our next Silver Mariner from the class of 90, Kyle A. Campo, master. Is Kyle with us? Let's congratulate from the class of 90, Kyle A. Campo. The next Silver Mariner Award winner from the class of 1990, Claudia G. Samini, Chief Engineer. Let's welcome and congratulate the very patient class of 1990, Claudia G. Samini. Claudia. Is Claudia there? She was there. Okay. Congratulations, Claudia. And finally, Silver Mariner Award winner from the class of 1990, Paul J. Laughlin, Chief Engineer. Let's congratulate from the class of 1990, Paul J. Laughlin. All right, congratulations, well-deserved. This ends the awards presentation. Please give all of our award winners a huge round of applause for their significant achievements and support to the alumni and to the academy. Congratulations, very proud of you. A great deal of thanks must go out to the Homecoming Awards Committee who put in countless hours an easy job. The committee was chaired by Gordon Inouye, 65, and he was assisted by Don Mathiason, 62, Dick Haluska, 69, Ed Moe, 76, Steve Dalton, 81, Susan Orsini, 88, Monica Malone, 93, the 50th year rep, Bill Rung, 70, and the 25th year rep, 
Dana Jones, 95. I have to give special thanks to the AAF staff, Lisa Donitz for assisting in the awards process. Let's hear it for Lisa. And to Meg Ropke and Tim Herlihy, who we could not have put on these video awards presentations without their help. Let's hear it for Meg and Tim. A reminder that on Saturday at 11.15, there will be a live stream of the Memorial Arbor's ceremony. The campus is closed, but we will have a live stream ceremony of Memorial Arbor's. Again, I really wish we all could have been in person together. We'll look to see what can happen next year. We look forward to seeing everyone at homecoming in 2021. Please stay safe and please stay healthy. Congratulations and thank you again to each and every one of you for representing the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy in the highest fashion possible. Congratulations, good night.